Vanakam, Namaste and blessings to everyone. This is Dr. Bhairavi Valasarupanim, PhD, the Sky Priestess. It's been a while since I've spoken to you. That's just so much that has happened. And in the distance, a train blows its whistle. I'm currently in the U.S. where I've been for the past couple of weeks. There have been a lot of things in my own personal life that came up. And I've just needed the time to, you know, chill out, think about things, get back to myself before I could talk to you a lot. And that's what I did. So here I am. Now, basically, in early September, we had an energy bomb dropped on our heads. And, you know, even though you can write it down, you can predict it, you still can't really predict what you're going to feel about it. In early September, Venus entered its shadow period. So it was in late Libra, um, it was just kind of beginning to walk the trail that it would once again retread during its retrograde, during its reverse period. So I'm going to leave you to use our good little friend Google to find out what a Venus shadow period is, a Venus retrograde period is. There's lots of good resources online that can help you with that. But just take it as a given. We started going into the descent of Venus. We started going into that phase where we're slowing down our um, external assertions, our externality, how we, you know, represent the feminine in like this is the feminine, this is she, this is I. This is when we're actually beginning to ask or we're being asked to move more inwards to focus more of the embodiment of the feminine, but from a place that is interior. It's not so much about what you're yelling on the outside, even though sometimes you have to continue the yelling, especially during a retrograde period. It's about what you are deep down within that has no words, no form, no shape. Anyone can tell you what you want, what you want to hear, but the experience of the feminine transcends any word. You can try to put in a box, you can try to put in a label, so why bother? Find whatever route works for you, find whatever path works for you. If you go to a teacher, make sure that person is a good person. And just experience her the way you can and want to. And this is the time for you to do it. You've already kind of been moving and sinking into that process from early September. And that's good. But that wasn't the only thing that happened in September. Sinking into that feminine, preparing from the retrograde is a good thing. But some other things happened at the same time that made it a little bit more complicated. September 9th, Venus entered Scorpio, which is fine. You know, it's going to enter Scorpio sometime. Um, Venus is, you know, she is really exploring the underworld, the shadow, you know, the hidden power and sexuality and desires of the feminine and how it's been repressed. You know, it's a great time for Venus, as far as I'm concerned, because all the shit comes up. But... As it entered Scorpio, one day after that, September 10th, Mars was in Aquarius. So what formed on, in these two days, and it was already building up, but Venus in Scorpio, Mars in Aquarius, the South Moon in Aquarius, and Uranus in Taurus all got together to form this grand, but it, it's basically a grand nodal cross. So like a grand cross holding together two point, uh, four points in the sky that includes the North Node and the South Node. So what happened then was that on the one hand, Mars and Aquarius is like trying to push for a new definition of what it is to be a man, what it is to embody masculinity irrespective of sex or gender, how it is you can actually find a more conscious and compassionate mode of action and engagement in the world. Very exciting. But at the same time, this is kind of clashing with Venus and Scorpio who is saying, look at me. This is what has been done to me. Something needs to be someone or something needs to be held accountable and if you're in the u.s you know exactly how that's playing out right now so you know i've been here in illinois listening to the radio going oh boy <laughs> this you know this is a drama that was written in the stars a long time ago but effectively this is a time where our high-minded ideals or was a time where our high-minded ideals and i would need to actually look at the history and the weight that Women in a particular, especially minorities, but women all over the world, and of course men have it in a different way, I'm not saying no, but women in particular have been subjected to this kind of oppression. And this oppressive energy has been clashing with Mars and Aquarius in a good way, because that's how change happens. It's not always gentle and sweet. Very often it's, it's like, you know, rocky. 
if go watch Rocky if you haven't watched Rocky it's fantastic so you know September 9th September 10th this huge energy bomb just gets hit on our heads and really we're still just reeling from from the uh, results I mean some of you might have enjoyed this time it might have been a great breakthrough for your healing some of you might have just had your hearts torn out it all depends where you are what you're doing what you can handle and what your karma is I can't predict that for you you can just look at the dates and figure it out for yourself now so things have just kind of been happening since then and really I didn't feel a point to talk to you yet <laughs> until some kind of a change or movement happened now come October 5th Venus Venus retrograde started properly at 10 degrees Scorpio and now we're at October uh, and now we are currently you know we're now properly in that inward motion we're going into the descent and this is really when we need to focus on revelation revelation what is true for us what makes us tick what are the things that we'll put up with what we won't put up with what are the entities energies people relationships jobs that we are willing to invest our life force into or what we want to separate ourselves away from this is you know the time to look at our what how we consider ourselves beings of beauty and whether our ideals of beauty actually disempower us or whether they empower mm -hmm. us these are all the kinds of things we need to think about all stuff all kinds of ancestral stuffs coming up all of those insecurities those past hurts those traumas those unshed tears those unheard cries from the feminine going way back to the generational line all of that is coming back now and it always has been in phases but it's just so intense right now because of this in, of, of the activation that Venus got just as she entered Scorpio it was like hello I'm looking at you as soon as Venus entered Scorpio there was Uranus and Taurus looking at her and urging her to transform and as Venus transforms she transforms Uranus in turn as the feminine allows herself to transmute what she needs to transmute to acknowledge what she needs to acknowledge she actually um, she does she how do I put it I don't like to use the word elevate because sometimes deepening is the way you actually get things done but it it changes the way we experience Uranus and Taurus it changes the way the collective actually has its antenna out it changes the way we think about larger questions like our planet like how we live in this planet how we you know we have created a particular were a human civilization based on a particular material value system or culture and how that impacts everything else you know ancient societies knew that the way we treated women and the way we treat the planet were pretty much one and the same thing because they saw so many parallels between the two but this is something that's obvious to some of us and to others it's like what so it's going to be a big wake-up call for people as we see the honoring of the feminine again in all bodies in all people we then open the doors and the gateways to actually find ways to honor more broadly the manifest the material matter the planet we're actually going to see um, if people are willing to build bridges ways where we can actually find um, collaborative group efforts that honor the feminine and honor the land this is going to be a theme that keeps marrying each other for some time. Um, it's always been that way, but it's coming back to our consciousness now because a lot of us have forgotten. So, <sighs> now what's coming up is that uh, October 9th, Mercury is going to be in Scorpio. It's going to leave Libra, which is fine. It just means that we're going to spend more of our intellectual energy is focused on the inner world focused on what it is that is hidden focused on you know our cellular memories and how they hold keys to our innate greatness and how they hold keys to the things that actually drain our energy we're going to be focused on that quite a bit and again that is fine but halloween 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 that's going to be a very interesting time October 30th, we basically see the moon moving from 29 degrees Cancer into Leo, Mercury moving from 29 degrees Scorpio into Sagittarius and conjuncting the North Node. What that means is the moon and Mercury will be trining each other in Cancer and Scorpio, the water signs, and they will basically move together into the fire signs. We're going to be seeing, you know, Mercury in Sagittarius kind of getting this little boost from the North Node in Sagittarius. And for the boost through the moon in Leo, and we're going to be seeing this 
movement of energy from this intense focus on water, emotionality, ancestry, genetics, into a more creative, passionate, potentially explosive, but very dynamic um, field of energy that we can then use to make new things rather than just sitting in our own ancestral pots. So that's a very powerful prelude, actually. It's next October 30th. October 31st, Venus exits Scorpio and enters Libra. Now, this is really, really important because as Venus is moving, it's going to be squaring Uranus again. It's going to be scaring the North Node and the South Node again. And it's going to be extraordinary because this is going to revisit the energy bomb that we felt September 9th, September 10th. So you can draw a line connecting September 9th, 10th to October 30th, 31st. And you can observe what has transformed for you with the knowledge of these dates. And it's a huge thing. It's a very big deal. Now, another huge energy point that comes up is November 6th, because then the true node, the two calculations of the nodes, astrologers use both for different reasons. So the true north node switches into 29 degrees Cancer, and on the same day, November 6th, Uranus switches into 29 degrees Aries. Now, I'm probably going to need another video to explain all of that, but long story short, we begin to turn the chapter, our karmic focus shifts away from our inner child, our love, of the way we express love, the way we express joy and creativity, and it moves further into ancestral waters. It moves further into healing our connection with the archetype of mother and our relationship with the oceans of the planet and among many other things. That's a big shift, November 6th. Mark it on your calendars. Now, with Uranus shifting back into Aries, again, astrologers have known this coming a long time, we're actually going to be seeing how the new energies that we have experienced with Uranus and Taurus for the past few months, we're going to be seeing these energies challenged once more by old ideas and old conceptions of self. So this is going to be the pushback. We've made tremendous progress this year, despite who says what. This year has been a breakthrough year. I would say this year is much more intense than 2012, and 2012 was a high point in terms of energetic intensity. We're going to be seeing a pushback of all energies that are trying to keep the status quo. And we're hopefully going to be seeing a counterforce coming in, not just from the cosmos, but people who want to move into the new paradigm, who want to move into the new vibration. They're going to have to love a lot fiercer, a lot harder, and in ways that are truly a lot more embodied. The push really comes in November. So what then happens November 8th? Jupiter lightens things up a little bit because Jupiter will finally leave Scorpio. So you've got to understand that a lot of the things that are happening between October 31st to November 8th are happening with Jupiter at the tail end of Scorpio. We are literally being forced to dig up the old skeletons in the closet. Whatever dues that we have left unpaid, whatever promises that we betrayed, whatever energetic or ancestral or magical contracts that we have not yet resolved. All of this intensity is going to be coming back at that time. And then new energy comes in November 8th. So that's wonderful. But again, it's still happening in this vortex, in this tornado of energy bombs the universe sees fit to throw at us. November 15th, the second calculation or the other calculation, the node known as the mean node, switches into Cancer. So what this means is between November 6th to November 15th, you can just think of this as a time of the shifting of the nodes. The North Node talks about what direction we need to take in life. The South Node talks about what we already know and what we kind of need to take a chill pill about. So, again, I probably need to do another video on that, but this is just to give you a date. November 16th. Can you believe me? I'm not done yet. Far from it. <laughs> Very far from it. But in terms of this video, we are coming to winding down to it. Um, you know, November 15th, one more thing happens. Uh, Mars moves into Pisces, which is lovely, which is an energy that can really help us find a bit of peace. It can or encourage us or even force us to find a bit of solitude and time for meditation, make space for ourselves. November 16th, Venus retro retrograde ends. And on the same day, Mercury retrograde begins. So 
it's like you know the retrogrades are kind of staggered one after the other it's like the moment you think you finish one lesson at venus mercury then goes well let's go back and think about it a little bit before you do anything so it's going to take basically till it's going to take some time to be honest it's going to take uh, venus till about mid december till she leaves her shadow period even though she's moving forwards from november 16 she really just takes till mid december about december 17 to get to full steam again so it's like you're coming out of the cave and you're like oh my god everything hurts i need to rebuild myself i'm coming back into the sunlight thankfully jupiter is in sagittarius at that time and no, and basically Mercury will finish its retrograde and then only really start to turn the corner round about, well, it looks to me that a lot of those shifts are basically happening at the tail end of December. So around Christmas time. So as you can see, this September to December period is like one, act, one action-packed super movie after the other. And it's just that, well, it's not a particularly fun movie for a lot of us to be in. But the key take-home message is this. Look at how you respect and embody the feminine in your day-to-day -day lives. Look at the men and women and children and beings that you honor, that you share energy with, and see if you are doing your part. That's the simplest way to deal with this energy. Take you know, have a notepad, write down what you've given, what you've not received, what you want to receive, what you think you're receiving too much of, and just do a very practical stock-taking exercise. Sometimes the answers to the most complex spiritual questions can really just be found in the everyday here and now. No matter how, you know, amazing, intense, abstract, occult, esoteric anyone can make the stars or the universe sound like, at the end of the day, a lot of your answers can be found in your own human body and in your own consciousness. So really, sometimes I wonder if all of the spiritual stuff is actually necessary. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. That's a great philosophical question. But just aim to be a decent person, aim to eat healthy, aim to do a little bit of exercise, um, ground out as and when you can. You know, these are just basic things. But these basic daily um, reminders can go a very long way and you will be amazed at how much transformation you, I mean you, can bring towards the collective just by taking care of yourself. And no, I'm not talking about becoming a self-indulgent, whatever, whatever. I'm just saying having the discipline to get into a routine of self-care that not only empowers you, it empowers those who want to be inspired by you. It empowers your children, it empowers your families. And it's the kind of thing which really goes a lot more, a lot deeper and a lot further in transforming and making a sustainable change in consciousness. Take concrete actions. You know, even if you think it's a small, tiny thing that only deals with you, if that's all you can do, that's enough but try to do a little bit more the next day and so on and so forth. The one reminder that I want to say that I haven't been talking about here just because there is so much to talk about is that, well, Chiron's right now at 29 degrees Pisces and is bringing up all of these old ancestral and intergenerational and, you know, past life trauma and all this venom from the collective. And it's also bringing up a lot of healing from the collective as well, but it's just this time where we seem like we're dealing with all the issues from the past. That's okay. That's pretty normal right now. But just remember you haven't gone backwards. The planets appear to be going backwards, but really that's just an illusion because of where we are on Earth. This is just a time where you are tweaking and retweaking everything that you've worked so hard to do, to achieve, to embody, to honor. And as long as you stay on your path, that is fine. You know? You don't need to be a superhero to save the world. You just need to be a decent human being and keep at it. Keep doing it little by little, bit by bit, day by day, and see what happens. So, yeah, I'm sure I'll be doing more videos, probably shorter ones in the future. And uh, might do some workshops in the U.S. I don't know yet. I'm going to see what the skies tell me. And, uh, yes, take care. Ciao, ciao for now. And God is bless. Bye-bye.